Hello and welcome to another month of Azure Databricks with Advancing Analytics. Today we're talking about partition data. So when you've got a data lake in your mix, how do you store that data in such a way that you can selectively read parts of it? You don't have to read the entire data set every time you query it. Remember, we don't have indexes, so partitioning is a big key factor. So we've got a few different levels of partitioning. First, we've got file extents. So when you have a single file there, remember that if you're using things like data lake, S3, blob storage, under the hood, that file is split up into several different extents. Now they're not used for partition pruning. We can't write a query and use partition elimination to ignore data, but it still affects parallelism. So be aware that your files are actually a collection of many files that make up that one thing that looks like a CSV. Next, we've got actual file level partitioning. So I can take my data set, and actually split up into several files and then define my data frame across all of those files together. Again, remembering each of those files is gonna have extents under it. Now I can do a level of partition elimination here. I could have to selectively ignore files, but it's not the best way of organizing our data. Finally, the thing that we really need to care about is folder partitions. So I can organize my data into folders and subfolders. And actually the syntax I've got here is really, really important. That is hive syntax. So I've got year equals 2019, year equals 2019. Essentially, I'm saying attribute equals value. Now, Spock will automatically pick up on that. It will automatically realize that that means there's partitioning and it can selectively ignore data. So if I access this data frame and tell it to only bring back data where the year is 2019, that's going to be great because it knows it no longer needs to look at the year equals 2018 folder and therefore it doesn't have to read the files inside. Now, there's a slight cost for every file access that we do to check security and that kind of thing. So I'm just not even looking at those files. So there's a huge amount of performance that helps if you have partitioned data. Okay, so here's a quick notebook as an example. So really quickly, I've got some CSV data held in my lake that's already mounted to Databricks. I'm just going to define a quick schema. I'm going to call a data frame. Don't really need to care too much about that. That's just getting some data in context. And then we're going to write that data out. So I've got an output location defined, and then I've got a my taxi data frame. I'm going to use write. I've got mode of overwrite. So that's saying if there's data already there, just trash it and replace it. This is going to completely overwrite anything that's already there. And I'm saying dot parquet, so export it as parquet files to that location. Then we have a look at what that does. So we can use our commands to go and see what's in that file system. And I've actually already got loads of different files. So that's an important point. So that file partitioning we're talking about happens automatically. So because Spark has several different workers always working in parallel, they're always going to create separate files for you. It just helps with parallelism. We don't need to find anything with it. If you wanted to create a single file, you need to force it to do that, and that is going to affect the speed that it can write out. So generally, just accept the fact that your data is held as separate files because that's how Spark works if you've got a partitioned data frame. Okay, so let's be a little bit fancier. We've got our partition export now, so different location. Same thing, taxi data frame, write, mode of overwrite, and now I've got partition by, and I'm giving it the name of one of the columns, one of the attributes in that data frame. So that dispatching base number is an attribute that exists, and then dot parquet into my location. And then let's have a look at what happens. If we go and have a look at that location, you can see I've now got lots of different folders. It's automatically created this folder structure based on me telling it that attribute. It's gone through, it's found each unique value and exported them. If we have a look at one of those sample base numbers, we can see inside there, again, we have file level partitioning. So it creates lots of separate files inside each of the folders and you get a folder per partition value that we've defined. So if we then take a data frame, so we're going to create a new data frame by reading in that parquet that we've just written out. And then I can use the explain. And that tells me the execution plan. That tells me how it's going to work with that data frame. And then having a look at it, I can see it's got 795 partitions. So 795 folders in that location now. And it's got no partition filters. It's not going to prune out any. It's going to bring in all of the data it finds there. Because I haven't done anything with that data frame. So let's try giving a bit of a test. Let's have a new filtered data frame. I'm going to say data frame dot filter, and then use that same attribute name equals, and then pick a value, and then run the explain plan again. So now we can see actually the explain plan that's coming out. We've got a partition count of one. So it's gotten rid of 794 folders worth of data, and we can see the filter that's been applied. 
Now, knowing that there's a small little bit of overhead every time it opens a file and checks security, regardless of reading any data, this is going to have a massive performance increase anyway. So just that really, really simple ability to grab an attribute and say partition by this column and then have it automatically understand partitioning is huge. So hope that helps. Don't forget to like and subscribe so we can keep doing this thing and we'll see you next time.